Hi, welcome to Pathfinder Plus. So last week, I didn't know if we'd be doing any more of these, but it seems like a few of you enjoy diving a little bit deeper into a topic. So this week, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the equinox. We're going to explore some of the science behind it. We're going to think about some of some historical things to do with it as well. And hopefully just get our brains thinking in a little bit of a different way. Now, as always, I love to know what you think. So tell your grown-ups if you have any ideas of things you would like to have in this video or if there are things that you'd like Rachel stop doing that then let me know I like to have feedback so we can make this more of what you want I'm also trying some different ways of doing the technology now I am old I'm not going to tell you quite how old you can hazard a guess I'm probably older than a lot of the parents watching this but I am I'm okay with technology, but there are some things that I'm practicing. So I'm going to practice sharing my screen for some of this. If it goes horribly wrong, please bear with me. But we're all learning, aren't we? That's why we love home education, so we can all learn at our own pace. So we're going to start off with a little quiz, because the equinox, equinox is all about physics. It's all about things to do with a space, which is part of the study of physics. So let's see. This is when I'm going to see if I can share my screen so we can do a quiz together at the same time. Let's see. Oh, can I make it bigger? Hang on, hang on. Here we go. All right. We're going to make it bigger. We're going to let's go. We're just going to see. Hopefully this will work. So how to play. We read the question and then work out the correct answer. See how many you can get correct. I am playing alongside with you. So we're just going to see how it goes. What is the largest planet in the solar system? Is it Jupiter, Earth or Mercury? I know it's not Earth. What do you think? I think I actually do know the answer to this. So I'm going to let you have a little think. And then I'm going to go with Jupiter. Let's check it. Yes, we got it right. Here we go. Next one. How many planets are there in our solar system? Now, this one, I was taught something different. And when I was a teacher, I used to teach something different to what is commonly accepted now. Is it eight, seven, or nine? So when I was a teacher, we used to teach that there were nine planets. But poor Pluto got kicked off. So I'm going to go with eight. Well done, Rachel. Approximately how long does it take Earth to rotate once on its axis? 24 hours, 365 hours, one hour. What do you think? I know this answer, so I'm not going to give any clues. It is... At least I hope I know this answer. 24 hours? Yes. Which planet is nearest to the sun? Venus, Earth, or Mercury? If you don't know, sometimes take out the answers that you know it's not. So it's not Earth, is it? Because otherwise we'd be very, very hot and crispy. I'm going to go with Mercury. Yes. All right. Which of these planets is not a gas giant? I feel like there are a few jokes we could make about gas giants, but I'll leave you for, to do that in your own home. Neptune, Earth, Saturn. Well, again, I know it's not Earth because I live here. It's not a gas giant, a giant gas. Uh, Neptune or Saturn? Neptune or Saturn? Ooh. Oh, well, that's the answer. Which of these is not a gas center? It's Earth. Sorry. I was just thinking, it was asking me which is. That's why you got to read these questions properly. Learn from me. Which planet is known as the red planet? Mars, Jupiter, or Venus? You can use this picture at the side, actually, to help you because we're very near Mars. Mm, I'm going to go with Mars. Yes. Which of these planets does not have a moon? Earth, Jupiter, or Venus? Again, let's discount Earth. I can see the moon most nights. This one I think I'm going to have to hazard a guess at, but I feel like I have heard that Jupiter has quite a few moons. So I'm going to go with Venus. Yes. Which planet takes the longest time to complete its orbit around the sun? Saturn, Neptune, or Mars? Let's see. We're going to speed this one up. I'm going to go for Neptune. Absolute guess. I know it's not Mars, and I'm thinking it's Neptune because that's a furthest. Oh, yes. Here we go. Which galaxy is our solar system part of? Andromeda, the comet galaxy, the Milky Way. What do we think? Think about a certain type of chocolate stars, and that might give you a clue. Mm, it's the Milky Way. 
What is the sun? Is it a planet, a comet, or a star? Hmm. It's a star. Well done. Let's see how we did. 10 out of 10. Well done, everybody. Let's see. Did that work? I hope it worked. How did you do? Did you get 10 out of 10 with us? Some of those I did have to guess at. But anyway, we did all right. So we have tested that knowledge a little bit about space because the spring equinox is all about when the sun passes the celestial equator. So if you extend the line, I'll talk about this in a video later, extend the line of the equator out into space. It's an invisible line. It's where the sun for a moment, I've got Oscar still there from the live lesson, where the sun is right across the middle of that. So let's find out a little bit more about that as well so it's important when you're talking about science to be able to explain it to other people that's a sign that you understand it it's all very well saying yeah i know how seasons happen i know what the equinox Lux is all about if you can't explain that to other people then that's maybe a clue that you need a little bit more understanding or work on understanding it. And one way we can do that is by creating a model. It can be a diagram, it can be a physical model, and it's a great way to explore big ideas that you can't actually experience because none of us can go to the sun and experience this. And most of us won't go up into space. So I actually find, I always think, oh, I know how the seasons happen. But then when I try and explain it to my kids, I think, hang on, do I really know? So this was me practicing along with you as well. So if you want to pause this and get a pencil and a piece of paper, it needs to not be a tiny one, but A4 is fine. And if, you, well, I'm not your boss. You don't have to do that. You can just sit and watch. But if you want to do this model along with me, pause this and get some paper. I'm going to start it now. I apologize if it's wobbly because like I said I'm trying to get it so you can see everything so on your piece of paper we might get the sizes wrong and that's okay but we're gonna do our Sun in the middle obviously the Sun is much 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 bigger than this and it's not even going to be the right size in comparison to the earth that we're showing but it's just a model so it's okay as long as we understand those things Right, and then we're going to have the earth. I'm going to do the earth in blue. No, I'm going to do it in green. I'm going to do it in green. All right. So we're going to draw four earths. Now, obviously, this is to show how they're moving around. There are not actually four earths orbiting the sun. All right. There we are. I don't know if you can see them, maybe. I should colour them in a little bit, a little bit, right, so we know that the earth orbits the sun, hang on I've lost my pen, I'm very professional here, right, I've got my pen, so we know that it orbits around the sun, and another thing we know is that it's tilted. If you're in the live lesson, you would have been tilting. So the axis goes from, there's a North Pole, South Pole goes here. Instead of thinking that it goes straight down there. Okay, so I'm going to draw that on all of them. Tilted this way. Little dots in the middle just to remind me. This next one tilted this way so they're all tilted the same way and here I think it's 20 something degrees isn't it that it's tilted so fairly significant right so there we've added in our tilted earths okay here we are we've got the sun we've got our earth it's tilted and obviously the sun is shining over here now the other thing to just remember is something called the celestial equator which is going to be hmm, let's get my other pen the equator we've got we'll do it here okay our equator kind of an imaginary line going through the middle and it actually extends this imaginary line out into space and that's a celestial equator right so now Let's get a light and our dark, even though I guess the sun doesn't shine dark rays. 
But if the sun is shining its rays over here, oh, there, 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 hmm, quite a lot. And the northern hemisphere, so this part here, you can see, is not getting as much. There, can you see? So this is hitting it directly and they're getting loads and loads and loads of light. But up here, not as much. So even though it is light, I've represented it as blue to remind us that it is not as much. So if we're over here, I wonder what season that's going to be. Have a think. What season do you think this might be if we're not getting much sunlight? It is winter for the north. There we go. Shine that over. Move that over there. And whoop, if it's winter in the northern hemisphere, it's going to be. Let me get my pieces of paper. Summer down here. Okay. I forgot to mention we're just going to move straight opposite to the other side of the sun there to do this earth. Oh, I need to draw the equator in first. So I'm going to get my equator in. It's there, isn't it? Remember the celestial equator? Goes out like this. And we've got our light coming out. Hang on, I've got myself confused. This is why I find it confusing because sometimes it can be really tricky to figure out in a model because you can't experience yourself. And for me, I really need to experience things. But what I can experience is that I know from my experience of the weather and the day that this must be true because that's how it works out in real life. Not that this isn't real life, but you know what I mean. So we've got winter down here for the Southern Hemisphere. It's not getting very much light, look at that. And then we've got summer up here. So let's follow around here from winter where we have just been. Now we know we're moving around to spring. So it's going to be spring in the Northern Hemisphere. And they've had summer, so it's going to be autumn in the Southern Hemisphere. Okay, let's get our equator drawn on. So our equator is going to be here. We'll move around one last one. So if it was winter in the Southern Hemisphere, it's going to be spring. And it's going to be autumn for us up here. Right. Okay. Might have talked a little bit too much and you might be thinking, yeah, I knew that. But can you explain it to somebody else so that they can understand? I don't know if I managed it, but... We'll see. If you have drawn this out, I would love to see how you've modelled it. So definitely send that to me. Right. Hang on. Sorry about that. Some random things came up afterwards that we're going to be showing later. So a little bit of a brain break we need now, don't we, from some of that. So I'm going to show you some different ways of balancing because you remember equinox is when the night and day is equally balanced for that one moment, 9.24 on a Monday evening this time. So I'm going to pick them at random. If you were here, I would let you pick which one shall we pick. And you've got to try and balance on it, okay? So first one, left leg. Balance on your left leg. And you've got to stay balanced on this until the next one, okay? Here we go. Hmm. One leg, one arm or hand. I guess you could do either. You could do your arm or your hand. See if you can balance that way. Try and keep it steady as you can. Next one. Your bottom. Can you balance on your bottom? Right, 
next one. Knees. Can you balance on your knees? Slightly trickier, I think, that one. Two left. Mm. We've got right leg. Can you balance on your right leg or your right foot? Last one. Only do this one if it's safe for you to do so and the space around you. I don't want anyone knocking the TV flying. Can you balance on your hands? You might want to lean your feet up against something, maybe the sofa if you need to. Maybe someone can hold your feet while you balance with your hands. If you need to pause to practice that, you can do. Right, excellent. So remember last time we had a story time, we had some puppets. Well, I wanted to do that again. So we have our little snakey here. Now, there's a story in Mexico where the snake god, let me just make sure I've got his name right, because sometimes it can be hard to remember and it's always good to check. So, Kulkulkan. Kulkulkan. Okay, the serpent god of the ancient Mayans. The story goes that it was just a normal boy, but as he started to grow, it was clear that he was something more. So his sister hid him in a cave and he grew and grew and grew to be this massive feathered serpent. And he grew so much that he kind of broke the cave up, caused an earthquake. And now every year in kind of summertime, they will have earthquakes that are a sign to remind people that he is still around. Now, you might be thinking, what has this got to do with the equinox? Well, let me tell you about a very special place. Here it is. This is why this came up earlier by accident. This is Chichen Itza. Now, let me get my face on. So this is a special place in Mexico. We're going to skip some of these slides. You can access them if you want. So here's Mexico in North America. And this was a city that was built, here we go, 1, 1,500 years ago. And it's a really important part of the city. Now, sometimes we think that people just built things in the past for the sake of it. But no, there was a really important reason why they built it there. They built it at the mouth of a well. So there were two large sinkholes nearby, which meant they had a lot of water. So it was a great place to build it. Now, the Kukulkan Pyramid is a really famous part of Chichen Itza, and it's an amazing piece of architecture. And they did it to mark the spring equinox, and it is really, really, really clever. So Kukulkan was the most important of the gods that the Mayan people worshipped, called the Feathered Serpent. But during the spring equinox, which is today, and the autumnal equinox, the sun's rays create a shadow across the pyramid, which gives the impression of a snake slithering down. So as if the god was coming down from the, the sky, some people think that he's also like the pet of, god, of the, the sun god, so he would come down. Now imagine the skill that will be needed for that to happen, to get the angles of the steps, that everything, just the angles of it perfectly done so that you can see this happening. I'm going to show you, I'm going to try and share my screen so that you can watch this together. So it's been sped up to show you what happens. Watch this shadow down here as the spring equinox happens. Can you see the wavy lines? And then at the end, you've got the head of the snake. Look at that. And then as it passes, it goes. That is pretty amazing. Whoop. Didn't pause the video there. There must have been something like exciting that happened at the end. That is one of the amazing ways that people in the past well, I'm not going to actually finish that sentence. I'm going to ask you, why on earth did they build things like that? And is there anything that we do today that's the equivalent? The spring equinox is an amazing time where, like I said, night and day is perfectly balanced. First of all, how would people have noticed that? And how do you think they worked out all the angles to be able to do that? But most importantly, why? There are a lot of places around the world. Stonehenge is one of them, which is in England, that are created in such a way to match the way that the sun and the earth interact together. And that was done before telescopes, before rocket ships, 
why though? Why did people do it? And is there anything that we do today that's similar? I don't know. That's what I want you to be thinking about. Thank you so much for watching. If you create anything this week, make sure your parents or grown-ups send it to me. Here is the address. Even if it's just that you've had a great conversation about this and you've got some answers and some ideas you'd like to share, I would definitely love to carry on the discussion a little bit more. Anyway, thanks so much for watching and happy exploring.